You get hazmat hoodie and protect yourself from radiation. Support show while scouting home for radiation. Available for only one week. Support show. Buy hoodie. The PSH-77 and Alton helmets. Armored Spetsnaz soldiers. During the 1980s in the Soviet-Afghan war, Soviet Spetsnaz units were subjected to modernization of their protective equipment, primarily the headgear. The standard army-issued steel helmets provided insufficient protection. Instead, Spetsnaz opted for titanium helmets. Two companies were producing titanium helmets in the world at the time. One was the Swiss company TIG, from whom the Soviets purchased several titanium helmets. The model PSH-77, or Polizei Schutzhelm 77. The PSH-77 helmets consisted of a 3mm thick titanium shell with a 2-layer aramid support and polyurethane foam. The helmets that the Soviets purchased were modified by removing the aramid layer and the original communications installment to replace it with their own communication system. The modification was implemented by one of the KGB's research institutes under the codename ALTIN. Modified PSH-77 helmets were issued to Spetsnaz groups A, B, and C fighting in the Soviet-Afghan war. It's recorded that they were used at the very beginning of the war during Operation Storm 333, the assault on the Tajbek Palace in Kabul. Most of the soldiers of the Spetsnaz Alpha group that assaulted the palace had the standard helmets, but some had brand new PSH-77 helmets. They performed well in action, assuring the Soviets to confidently purchase a larger batch. While the helmets were issued to Spetsnaz, some were also given to the Research Institute of Steel with an order to make an improved copy for domestic production. In the late 1980s, the Institute came up with a 3 mm thick helmet with aramid support and a titanium visor with two options for window sizes. The installation of radio communications, straps, and the painting on the helmet was done by KGB specialists. The helmet was designated the Altin, an old Russian word for a gold coin used in imperial times. The Russians' first version of the Altin R1 differed from the Swiss PSH-77 in overall size, with the Altin being slightly larger. Russian experts also used a different production technology. Instead of warm stamping, they used a deep drawing stamping process. The result of the modification production process was a more uniform thickness of the helmet, which was 10 to 15 percent more efficient than its Swiss counterpart as tests would show. The polymer glass on the visor was one of the parts that were of foreign production. The helmet was marked as a second protection class, and the visor a first protection class according to Russian armor classifications. The rim was covered with either rubber or aramid edges. The entry socket for the intercom was positioned on the back side of the helmet. The Altin R1 helmet was subject to trial shots from a TT-30 and Makarov PM pistol. The trial showed that the most vulnerable part of the helmet was the temporal region, which could not withstand a hit from a TT-30 7.62 by 25 mm pistol cartridge with a steel core from a 16.5 foot or 5 meter distance. In 1991, the production of the Altin R1 started with a rate of 100 to 120 helmets per year. In the second half of the 1990s, Altin helmets went through several modifications, primarily regarding the integral intercom system. The end product was the 1997 Altin P2M, with a 4mm thick titanium armor and aramid support made in one piece consisting of 10 layers of fabric. The improved armor resulted in a better trial performance confidently withstanding a hit from a TT-30 pistol. Both versions of the Altin were in the service of Spetsnaz units throughout the 1990s and the first decade of the 21st century. During the First and Second Chechen War, the Altin helmet went through serious combat tests. It was used by Spetsnaz and regular army units, and it was sometimes used in combination with titanium body armor vests for overall protection. The helmet was intended to be worn with the visor, but soldiers often preferred to wear it without it. Even though the visor provided excellent protection in storming buildings and similar assault operations, it was a great obstacle when soldiers tried to aim their rifles. Also, with a total weight of 9.5 pounds or 4.3 kilograms, taking off the visor made the helmet far more comfortable. Apart from its service in wartime, the Alton helmet also received a legendary status among the Russian counter-terrorist units. Even though the production of the Alton ceased in 2009, the helmet is still in use by Spetsnaz anti-terrorist units and is still regarded as a high-quality piece of protective equipment. 
The design of the Alton was the reference for the Research Institute of Steel to make a commercial version of the helmet designated the K-63 and a new modified police version, the Lynx-T.